This is Joshua Melendez, LatinoBeats.com, alongside with New Mexico Entertainment Magazine. We had the great opportunity today to sit down with the cast of 50 to 1 for a brand new interview. Check it out. So, Chip, you got any long shots for us? Oh, you're kidding. That's all he's ever got. <laughs> we don't get more horses to train. We're going to be out of business. Hey, we got that cowboy's a goner. Thanks, man. You saved my ass. How are you? Man? You ever need another trainer? Someone to watch your back. I'm mad at that. He's a two-year-old thoroughbred. James, mind that bird. I don't think he's what you're after. Let's give him a try. Okay. You want this horse. I'll be in. <laughs> Mr. Allen, your horse qualified for the Derby. The Kentucky Derby. You got one last shot. <laughs> Joshua Melendez, LatinoBeast.com, also New Mexico Entertainment Magazine. We had the great opportunity last night to sit in and watch the viewing of 50 to 1 and an awesome opportunity today to sit in with the cast. Now, this is a Jim Wilson movie. Jim Wilson is an Academy Award winner for Dances with Wolves. He's also responsible for bringing Mr. Brooks and also The Bodyguard with the late, great Whitney Houston. And Jim, I was almost questioning that this was a Jim Wilson movie because I didn't see the cameos or guest appearances and I was looking for them from Kevin, mm. from Kevin Costner. And I thought the dance scene would be great. <laughs> I, he could come in and dance with a wolf perhaps or cut in and dance with Madeline. And I didn't see it. What was going on with that? We talked about it, but, uh, but I, I don't know. All those roles were filled. I mean, everybody here, uh, they landed the perfect parts and uh, talked to Kevin. There was just nothing in it for him. So maybe sometime we'll find something for him down the road. But it wasn't in 50 to 1. All right, now you've been working on this since 2010, is that yeah. right? Yeah, three years. It's taken three years to get to you right now, yeah. All right, what had you, you know, so dedicated to this story of Mind That Bird that you had to start it and see it through in such a quick amount of time? Yeah, well, look, it's, it's recent history. So in 2009, you know, Calvin Burrell was on this horse, Mind That Bird Derby, and it was such a stunning race. I said, look, you got to get those rights quickly because other people may try and get those rights to the story. And I said, this is too good. I, I love 50 to 1, love underdog stories. Obviously, I, I love thoroughbreds. I own a bunch of horses myself and uh, in race in California. So I said, let's get this, let's get this story rolling because it takes a while to do. And um, spent the better part of a year back and forth getting to know all the people connected with, with the horse. So it was Chip Woolley, Mark mm -hmm. Allen, you know, the owner, and, uh, and Leonard Block. So, um, it just takes a while to make good films. I mean, I, it, 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 it does. The detail that goes into this stuff between raising the money, which we had to do on this one because the studio didn't want to do this particular picture, um, casting your film, setting preparation, shooting it, cutting it, releasing it, it just takes a while to do. And uh, again, it's, a, it's just a passion of mine, and uh, I think I'm as passionate about this film as, as any film I've ever done. Awesome. Now, Christian and Todd, you guys look like you have way too much fun <laughs> during the filming of this flick. Like, what was going on? Was there, was there ever a dull moment with you guys? Well, I got to meet Christian uh, for the first time. I came in and I auditioned for the role that Christian's playing, and I wasn't quite right for it, and he just fits the part to a T. Uh, but they called me and said, hey, we have this other part in it. Uh, Mark Allen needs his cousin, his running buddy. So I showed up on set, it's like, buddy, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be your shadow, and um, I'm just going to support you. So that was kind of my action through the whole film. Yeah, we're easy, and we, we both don't shy away from a beer, so we get to know each other pretty quick, you know. And Mexico is a great place to eat, uh, also to drink. So we'd uh, we'd go out and have a little bit of food and have a couple beers, and we got to know each other pretty quick. It was it was it was easy for me and him. We're cut from the same, uh, yeah, so cloth. So yeah, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun, especially in New Mexico. Like I said, great food, great beer. <laughs> <laughs> Right, now you said you and, and the character you portrayed, Mark Allen, were, were a lot alike. And watching you, it wasn't even like you were acting, it was watching, like CMT had a show of the real cowboys of New Mexico, and you were just in there being yourself. Well, I'm, I'm from Oklahoma, you know, I'm Cherokee Indian, and, uh, and 
and I got to know Mark, and, and uh, it, literally, like, the apple didn't fall too far from us. You know, it was, like, it was like, I knew this guy. So that was the best thing in the world. So when I met him, I was like, oh, I know him, and it's almost me. So I just got to go be me, almost, because we're that close. Now, the acting is involved, and you want the emotions to come out, and that's a lot of work and stuff like that. And Jim was, I was fortunate enough to have Jim uh, lead me through the waters, but... As it, when it comes to you know trying to find this character and playing a role, I, I felt like I knew him so well, and I feel like we had some of the same heart, that it wasn't a stretch. I gotta be honest. Right, uh, Calvin, you, you did a tremendous job for your first time, and it's amazing to me because you're such a sweet guy, but when you race, you transform yourself into this super intense beast that's going out there to to kill and do anything to win the. Win the race, so I'm just amazed how much of a nice guy you are. And it, yeah, it's a different story, you know. When the cage break, I mean, uh, every man's for himself, more or less, you know. And uh, I mean, it's who can take the fastest, and you know who can get to one another. And you know, you have like three horses in a race that you know you gotta beat if you look on paper, and you have to put them in a spot not to win if you can. Or you know, come through holes that are not there sometimes. You know, especially in them kind of races. Uh, it, it's called a money money game and a money rider race. You know, when when the money's down, you know, I am. <laughs> 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 you know, I have to be. I mean, I make my living doing it, but I know where to be at all times. You know, especially at Churchill. And uh, you know, I gotta thank the owners, the trainers, and him for just giving me the opportunity to do this. I had fun doing it. Right. Now, was it even a question that you would portray yourself that no one else could come in because they couldn't match what you would bring? Well, when Jim, he contacted me, I didn't know I had to play myself, you know, and then when him and my wife got to talking, well, he could, you know, just take the reins and just be yourself. And I said, well, that'd be all right. I think I'd like it, you know. And it wasn't nothing different in the room, in the jock room, on the horse, you know. So I had fun. had a good time. Right. Now, this derby was uh, really had a heartfelt moment for you, and uh, it captured it in the movie. How was that like to recreate? Uh, <laughs> it was a little hard, but it, it was awesome, you know. I mean, uh, my mom and dad got to see my first derby, and then they both passed away, and, uh, and I was fortunate enough to win two more after that, and this was the, the next one. So uh, it was very heartbreaking, but uh, at the same time, it was a good feel. Okay. <clears throat> now, Todd, again, you know, Every time you were in the scene, you left your mark. And I particularly love the way that you ended every scene. Was that something that was written in or kind of spontaneous? You just, you just threw it in there? I just didn't have any dialogue and I got bored. So, <laughs> and everything to memorize, so it's like, I gotta think of something to do. And maybe, maybe it'll stick. Yeah. Man, it was, it was awesome. You stole every scene that you were in toward the end. Uh, thank you, thank you. Now, Hugo, whenever you came on, you know, Jim was saying last night that your agent said you were an expert on horse. You were basically a former jockey. <laughs> <laughs> I am an expert. It's a hell of a job. <laughs> but on the first day, you weren't so familiar. Is that the case? That's the case. Uh, I, I thought I knew how to ride. <laughs> and I, I've been on a horse before. You know, I've been on a horse before. Yeah, but it didn't move. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'll get it down. I'll, I'll get it uh, down by the time we, we uh, finish our, our trip. <laughs> oh, great, great. Now, uh, Madeline, you're such a sweetheart too. But in oh, the thanks. film, you're such a firecracker, and, oh. and everyone seemed to relate to their character. Which one are you? Are you the firecracker or are you the sweetheart? I'm not very nice. No, you got that wrong. <laughs> No, um, I, yeah. <laughs> Last night she was very nice. It might have oh, been, the, might have been the drinks. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't, I didn't even have a drink last night because I was so like wound up. Um, but no, no, I, I, I'm really lucky to like meet, you know, people like you that care and ask questions and are generous and excited about the film. And we're all so lucky to do what we do. It's not, it is a, it is a job. You know, people ask you. Oh my God, was it so fun? And you're like, yeah, my job is fun, but it's a job too, you know, and it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of discipline, but at the same time, it is so fun. It, we're so lucky. So, um, 
no, I mean, I, just, I just feel really like blessed that I get to talk about the film, that I got to play Alex. Um, but yes, I am, I am a firecracker and a huge <laughs> pain, and I'm sure they'll kick me off the bus and leave me on the side of the road. All right, now in the film, there's kind of an underlying, almost love story kind of, starts off with a hate story between you and Ship. What's, what's going on with that? I think it's really up to the viewer to kind of decide what the relationship is. Um, you know, I think Jim and Faith intended it to be more of a, uh, almost like a like father-daughter mm -hmm. story, or maybe like a brother-sister story. Mm -hmm. They definitely have that love-hate relationship. Um, but it, w it was definitely interesting to play because it was, it was open-ended. Um, and so there are moments uh, where, you know, I really felt like it was like real life because you kind of don't know what's going on, you know? And that's really real life. Sometimes you're hanging out with someone and you think, you know, I really don't know what my relationship is with them. And it's constantly uh, morphing and changing. Awesome. Now, Jim, there's a lot of sports movies and things that when they do like the races or the games, they don't fully capture the realness, you know, and, and the liveness that happens when it actually goes on. You caught that in, in this film. How, how did you do that? Well, part of it is, again, you know, Maddie was just alluding to it's a job and you, you work at it. So I've been making films for I think, 40 years now and I started off doing sports documentaries. So I cut my teeth doing uh, primarily tennis documentaries, a little bit of golf. So I'd shoot a lot of footage and start to cut it together. Um, and I'm a real passionate guy about horse racing. So I wasn't going to take on something. I don't direct many films. I produce most of the pieces. But this is one I felt comfortable with. It's a, a, um, a piece of history that I knew about, researched greatly. And so uh, it was imperative that this become as authentic a race, you know, with Calvin, with, with a horse that looked just like Bird. And we went to great lengths to put it on the right track. So we went to Churchill Downs to recreate a piece of, of the race and went to Sunland Park here in New Mexico uh, and went to Santa Anita Park in Los Angeles just to go to the right track. So, um, yeah, for me to get this big race, it's a big reason I made the movie right, um, was tantamount. I mean, it's, it's paramount. It's the most important thing to do is to get that race right because people expect that. They, they, right. they kind of know where that journey is going to go, but you better have a payoff. So I, I knew that was if there was a critical scene to cut, shoot properly and prep, it was the race. And the movie's coming out in seven different states? Yeah, so the movie opens here in New Mexico tomorrow. It opens uh, March 21st in New Mexico statewide, and then it's a rollout. So it'll open uh, April 4th in Texas and Louisiana, and we'll move right on up seven states, right up through Kentucky. So it'll be there in Kentucky right before the Derby. Pretty much the, uh, the track that they took, right? Yeah, yeah. So Chip Woolley started off here in New Mexico and said, all right, I'm going to, even with a shattered leg and, and whatnot from his motorcycle accident, he decided he's going to go ahead and trailer the horse to, uh, to Kentucky. So it does mirror a little bit, reflect the, the same trip that uh, Chip took. That's awesome, the yeah. way you're doing it. Yeah, that's fun. So, well, guys, I think that would wrap it up. Thank right. you, man. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Huh? May God and Don Julio help us. What are his chances? Not too good. Everybody knows that horse doesn't belong here. Frankly, I wouldn't be worried if they had God riding for them. You guys are looking like you're ready for the shootout at the OK Corral. Yeah, we're ready for anything. We got a chance to be a part of something truly great. great. Maybe we'll look stupid to some. <laughs> Life ain't worth much if all you do is play it safe. All right, guys, let's get lucky. 20 bucks. Anyone else think you won't finish in the top 10? I'm not taking it. Please, God, just don't let him be last.